Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, alhamdulillah, hamdan yuwafi ni'amahu wa yukafi'u mazidah, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, Allahum a'limna ma anfa'una wa anfa'na bima a'lamtana, wa zidina ilman, ya kareem. By the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, we come together to speak of a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrated by Abu Dhar, Al-Ghifari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Where the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam He said لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طلق Do not belittle or disdain a good deed in the least No matter how small it may be Be it just meeting your friend, your brother, in Islam with a smiling face, you know, while you're smiling at him. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said in another narration, he said, تَبَسُّمُكَ فِي وَجْهِ أَخِيكَ صَدَقَةً That when you smile at a brother of yours, وَعَيْكُمْ سَلَمْ It's considered what? It's considered صَدَقَةً It's considered صَدَقَةً and the reason why, can that window be closed? Or it can't? Yeah, close. So, um, yes, you can. Go ahead. But there is no buttons here for the fan. Yeah, they're outside. Okay. For the hadith, if somebody would like to go and do that, they can. You can go ahead. So, the Prophet ﷺ he said in this hadith, "Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa." That when you smile at your brother, it's considered sadaqa. And the reason why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he legislated so many different ways of sadaqah, and you'll learn very soon that there are several different ways of sadaqah, is so that a person what? So that, that a person doesn't get sick of one particular way of doing good. You know, if you continuously read Qur'an, maybe two, five hours a day or six hours a day, you'll find what? That you might get bored. If you continuously come and listen to lectures, you'll obviously get bored. And that's why, you know, the Sahaba, they used to say that كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتخولنا بالمعضة That the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام, he used to what? He used to pick particular times to give us معضة, give us admonition. It wasn't always that the Prophet ﷺ would just be giving lecture to the Sahaba and this kind of thing. Rather, he would pick a, a time and then leave them for a little while. مخافة السآمة As uh, the Sahaba, they said, so that we don't get what? We don't get bored of the admonition of our dear Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And amongst the simple ways, and the one mentioned here, is that you smile at your brother. When you're just walking by, last time we learned, that you know, to give salam is one of the best actions to someone that you know, and someone that you know, don't know. So now, couple that salam up with a smile as well. So you go, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Doesn't that look kind of freaky? <laughs> Somebody walks up to you, Salaamu Alaikum You're almost like, Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Right? It's kind of freaky because we've left the values that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah's Messenger wants from us. Smiling at one another. You know, almost like love in the air. Everyone likes each other. There's no problems. And that's not the reality of life today though. That is not the reality of life. Sadly enough. Um, so, as I was saying, that there are a number of other ways that the Prophet ﷺ also considered sadaqah. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned in a very beautiful tradition, he said that technical difficulties, give me a second. He said, Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqah. There is that one hadith that we already mentioned, that smiling in the face of your brother is sadaqah. 
And then the Prophet والسلام, he continued and he said, وَأَمْرُكَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ صَدَقَةً And that when you also, when you command people with good, this is also considered صدقة. وَنَهْيُكَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ صدقة. And when you forbid the evil that the people are in, this is also considered صدقة. وَإِرْشَادُكَ الرَّحْلِ فِي أَرْضِ الضَّلَالِ لَكَ صدقة. And when you have people that are lost and you teach them the way and you tell them the way, it's also considered صدقة. وَإِمَاطَتُكَ الحجر. And when you find like a rock on the floor or something like that, that's also when you, and you, rip, uh, and you pick it up and you remove it from the street, this is also considered صدقة. So the ways of صدقة are so many. There are too many to list. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he continued, not just in this tradition, and continuously mentioned several different ways. Why? As we said earlier on, the reason for this is so that you don't get bored. And that's why, even if you look at the day, the actions that a person is supposed to be doing daily, you wake up in the morning, and you read your adhkar. Pray, pray Salat al-Fajr, then you read your adhkar. Then it's time for your livelihood. But during the livelihood, it's also good to pray Salat al-Duha. And amongst the ways for a person to increase his rizq from Allah Azza wa is to pray Salat al-Duha. This is uh, mentioned in a number of traditions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi that it helps a person increase in his rizq. Why? Well, there is a slight munasaba, if you'd like to say, a slight correlation between Salat al-Duha and rizq. And that's the fact that everybody else is going and using the worldly means to seek rizq in the morning time. And a person gets up, takes time from his, his busy schedule and prays two raka'ah for Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really loves this. And he realizes that this person's tawakkul, his trust is solely upon Allah Azza wa Jal. So you know, you have, then you pray Salat al-Duha, then it comes time for Salat al-Duhur. After Salat al-Duhur, Dhuhr, you go and pray, you go and sit for a qaylula. After that time, I'm talking about ideal situation. Most of us don't do this, but I'm talking about an ideal situation. Then you, um, you know, you pray Salat al-Asr. After that, there's some more adhkar that you should be reading. Probably around Maghrib time, if you have some time, maybe you should go visit uh, somebody. And visiting people for the sake of Allah is rewardful. Maybe you should go and visit the sick, maybe you should look for a needy and help him. All these things you can do after Maghrib. And after Isha time, without speaking, again, ideal situation, you go and go to sleep. And the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't like sleep, speaking after Isha, except in a matter that was good. He didn't like to have just general conversations and you know, late night parties and these kind of things. Uh, ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ didn't like parties anyways, but I'm referring to us. And uh, uh, all these kind of things. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ would sleep the earlier night so that he can have some time to uh, he can have some time to pray tahajjud. And a, a good portion of the Prophet ﷺ's night was spent in tahajjud. So you see, if it was that you know come to the masjid and pray all day, none of us would have been capable of doing such. Isn't that so? But since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the manner and the behavior of, or the nature of human being, He legislated His laws accordingly. That it's not just one thing that you can do, and there's not just one gate through which you enter Jannah, rather there's several gates and several ways to do good, and several ways to enter Jannah as well. And one of the interesting ways is in that tradition, uh, and since we're talking about boredom, the tradition where the Sahaba came to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, yeah, they said, Ya Rasulullah, ذَهَبَ أَهْلُ الدُّثُورِ بِالْأُجُورِ The rich folks have taken all of the ajr. So the Prophet ﷺ, or, or the Sahaba, they continued and they said, يُصَلُّونَ كَمَا نُصَلِّي يَصُومُونَ كَمَا نَصُومُ وَيَتَصَدَّقُونَ بِفُضُولِ أَمْوَالِي That they pray as we pray, they fast as we fast, but they have an edge over us, and that's because they're rich, they can also give sadaqah. So, the Prophet ﷺ now, again he's mentioning more different types of sadaqah, some of the ones we previously mentioned, mentioned, but there are some more in here as well. He said, أَوَّلَيْسَ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ مَا تَصَدِّقُونَ مَا تَصَدَّقُونَ 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, He hasn't made anything for you to give sadaqah with. So then, it was almost like a rhetorical question for them to think. And then, the Prophet ﷺ continued and gave him an answer. And he said, Inna bi kulli tasbihatin sadaqah. Verily, every time you say subhanallah, it's considered sadaqah. Wa kulli takbiratin sadaqah. Every time you say Allahu Akbar, it's considered sadaqah. And every time you say alhamdulillah, wa fi kulli tahmidatin sadaqah. Wa kulli tahlilatin sadaqah. Wa amrun bil ma'rufi sadaqah. And even if you say la ilaha illallah, this is considered sadaqah in the Allah. This is considered sadaqah in the eyes of Allah, in the, in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jalla. All of these things are considered sadaqah, either good deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said another tradition, not here, he said, kullu wa kullu ma'rufun sadaqah. And everything good you do is sadaqah. So basically you can live a life of a person that's doing more, no more than giving sadaqah, and you don't have to be rich for it. So then, you know these poor folks, they were really keen on keeping this a secret. It was supposed to be like a, you know, a secret for just the poor folks. And you know how uh, in certain sectors of society, the ones that you know usually don't make money, they always know where the sales are. So they knew where the sale is. <laughs> so, um, um, so the Prophet ﷺ, he continued and he said, وَفِي بِضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةً And even... In the marital relations that you, one of you does for a man, is also considered sadaqah. So you know, just as you're shocked, if you haven't heard this before, the Sahaba were shocked as well. They said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, one of us completes and fulfills our desires, and you're going to consider that sadaqah as well? So look at what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, Do you not see that when he enters his private part into something muharram, it's considered haram, and he gets a bad deed for it. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace is greater for him to punish an individual for an action, and he does it in a halal way, he doesn't punish him, rather he rewards him. Now, since we're talking about boredom, you know, I know it's hard to get bored of that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why he's made it that way. It's extremely difficult to get bored of khair. So I don't know why a person would ever look elsewhere. The only reason why we find that in our times people start to look elsewhere is because marriage is made so difficult. It's made so difficult. There's so many strings attached and you know, mandi and madri'ish and there's so many things that people just find it too difficult. Your average young man who should be given the opportunity to get married easily who should be given that. Similarly, a young woman should be given. And then what happens? What happens then? Evils start to seep through into society, deteriorating our values. Slowly this woman gets up and starts standing on high heels. And then the other one says, okay, you're as tall as me now, you've gotten as much attention as me now, I'm gonna start showing some skin. And then another person shows some more skin. And another person shows some more skin to a point where the values have been distorted. And we fall into nothing more than a satanic trap. And it is a satanic trap for if you were to look closely at what exactly was it that was the outcome of what uh, Satan did to our father and mother, Adam and Eve, what was it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the outcome, He says, لِيُرِيَهُمَا سَوْآتِهِمَا So that He may show both of them, one to the other, their private parts. As in, the clothes would be taken off. And that's what happened when Adam alayhi salam and Hawa ate from that tree, their clothes were taken off. And فَطَفِقَ يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ So they were trying to cover themselves up with other things. But the point of the matter is, that what Satan wanted to do at that point was nothing more than take their clothes off. And similarly, if we don't make it easy, and you guys might be fathers of young women, a pious man comes, you might not have a good job. If you make it difficult, and the whole society makes it difficult, eventually the values 
will begin to deteriorate and they'll always go down further and further in the pit. And nothing will get better. But Allah's Prophet ﷺ, in their society, things were much more simple, much more lax. That's why people were able to find what they needed. And it's a natural instinct of a man. People were able to find this in halal means. To an extent that the Prophet ﷺ rather is encouraging. Encouraging by telling you that it's sadaqah. To fulfill your desires in the halal way. It's considered sadaqah. And he's actually encouraging. And that's why even older folks, and you know, some may shy down from speaking about this, but even older folks, Satan not only wants to make you have a divorce. Because we know that amongst the plans of Satan, amongst the things he likes, is what? Breaking between, huh? Between a husband and a wife. But that breaking doesn't occur right away. I mean, if, if for for some people, if they were to look back, there you know, you might even think to yourself, oh, maybe it was a couple of years ago that you were able to come together as a husband and wife, a couple of months ago, and that's and and if it was to be a person that would be indulged in nothing but muharram, then what would what would it be? It would be like every single night, and this is something. It's a satanic trap. He's trying to slowly. Decrease that love between the husband and the wife. And it happens from both angles. The wife might not dress up for the husband. The husband might not be smelling good. And you know, I sometimes I meet people and they smell bad. And wallahi, the first thing that comes to my mind, I feel sorry for this guy's wife. Come on man, make yourself smell good. The Prophet ﷺ when he would walk into his... Uh, honestly, I'm not even joking. I meet the person and all I'm thinking is, I'm like, man... How does this guy say salam to his wife? <laughs> I can say salam to him and stay away, but this wife has to, miskina, she has to actually be in bed with this individual. It's gross to see a person that's not keeping his, you know, uh, personal hygiene up to par. I mean, it's not very expensive to get a deodorant. And if you don't want to have it, brother, I'll buy you one. <laughs> but the point of the matter is that clean yourself up. The Prophet ﷺ, when he would walk, into his house. He would brush his teeth. He would take a miswak and brush his teeth. Why? So that when he walks in, he doesn't, you know, have a bad smell in his mouth that will then harm his spouse. And probably cause a barrier right there. A barrier, a trap of shaitan. A barrier between, you know, a husband and the love and the wife. And, you know, we understand from this that there's a number of different ways that a person can give sadaqah. So don't despair from the grace of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything you do, when, when you sleep at night, you can have the right niyyah, wake up for fajr, sleep early. When you eat food, if you're doing something good right afterwards, and you think if you eat this food, you'll have energy to do that good, right here, that's sadaqah, that's a word for it. Anything you do in life can become rewardful. It, all it takes is just an intention. Now there could be a person that meets another, says, great, greets him, says salam, he puts a smile on, and the reason why he's doing it is because he's got business to take care of. Another person can do that same thing, same action, but his intention is nothing more than to please Allah. And there you are, you have sadaqah. With that being said, we'll stop. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.